Hey YouTube, welcome to the Off-Grid Mountain Homestead. All right, I got the Bear Buster ready to go. Bear-proof apiary, solar powered. See, I got a little solar panel up there. I got a disconnect switch for the charger. Good old lead acid battery sitting there. So let me show you how I got this thing set up and the fence charger I used. So we'll go over each component individually. All right, first we'll start with the shutoff switch. It's just generic battery switch off of Amazon. I think it's an Amper brand. It was cheaper to buy this kind of disconnect switch than it was an actual electric fence cutoff switch. So I uh, use this style switch and I put it, of course, near ground. It's not near the hot, the hot's below it, but you gotta have some sense when you're you know, out in the country. But anyhow, there's the disconnect switch. It goes around, the wires are tucked in, splits the power between the charger and the battery on the hot leg. I've got a, found a nice little solar panel kit comes with a charge controller, a little 20 watt panel, monocrystalline panel, comes with a little stand and all that, so I got that mounted up. And here is the back of the sole perk panel. You can see the little 20 watt panel, and it's 15 inches by 13 inches. See the dimensions right there, just a little, little fella, but it works. So I got a little cover on the charger right here. Uh, the charger is a Parmac Magnum 12. It is weatherproof. But I just throwed a little little cover on top of it to keep uh, you know rain and stuff from sitting on it all the time. I'll go over the specs on the charger in just a second. I wanted you to uh, see a little solar charge controller here. This is part of the package from Soul Perk. It's a little 8 amp charge controller. And I got it going down to a little 100 amp hour battery. Just an old spare Walmart special uh, deep cycle battery. You can see how old it is. And uh, it is 109 amp hour battery. So, yeah, the little solar charge controller's got this thing charged up good. So uh, let me go over the specs on the charger now. So here's the charger. It's a 30 mile fence charger, uh, Parmac Magnum 12. The Parmac company offers a prepackaged solar uh, option. It's got a built-in panel and a little built-in small battery and stuff, but uh, it was out of stock through the vendor and uh, third party vendors had got it. You know how that works. They double and triple the price. So I wasn't playing that game. So I just built my own solar setup. So charge controller, solar panel, fence charger and battery. Uh, it actually came out, if you don't count the battery, it came out cheaper to do it this way. And it's a big battery and a lot bigger panel than what the uh, prepackaged kit comes with. So I just DIY'd my own solar powered fence charger. So, uh, this is 13,500 volts. It'll produce 1.1 joules and stored energy is 3.1 joules. So it's got a lot of, lot of power behind it. And uh, what you need to keep a bear out is 0.5 to 0.7. So this is almost double. Uh, so yeah, it's overkill. And uh, yeah, I touched it. I sure did. Find out what it felt like and oh man, it is strong. It makes your joints hurt when it hits you. It feels like getting hit by 480 volt. So if anybody's ever been hit by 480 volt, you kind of know what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna show you the functions on this thing. It's got a pretty cool uh, little meter. It'll show you the, it'll do a meter sweep. It'll do a battery check, and then it'll show the uh, volts of the fence. So this is off grid if you'll hit that safety switch out there. So it's a meter test. And there's the battery charge and then it'll start doing its thing in a second. Can you hear it? You can't see it or smell it, but you can hear it and you can feel it too if you grab on that wire. And did uh, I touch the fence on purpose? No, Masses Off Grid was playing grade school kid tricks with me. I got him some grass, but he won't touch it. it says touch it with that grass, I ain't crazy. The other day when we first hooked up, she's like, I dare you to touch us. I ain't touching. I said, we'll touch it with a stick, though. See what it does with a stick. Ooh, yeah, you can feel a little bit. A little bit of moisture in that, that little sap on piece. You can feel a little bit. But I definitely am not using no grass to touch. It'll burn right through that and eat me up. She's already tricked me once. I dare you. I dared her touch it. She wasn't going to touch it. If you didn't grow up in the country, you wouldn't understand. You and your little friends walking by an electric fence, I dare you to touch it. I dare you. Or you grab somebody's hand and then you grab onto it, 
and it goes right through you to them and you don't even feel it. Yep, who hadn't done that? But probably not with chargers this strong in this shorter run. You know, poly tape and little weak chargers are completely different than this monster. This is serious here. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. That's a ground. That don't count. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> are you stunned? Or are you going to try to get shocked? Good thing I got it off or you just got ate up just then. So yeah, this is our uh, catch-22 situation right here. All jokes aside, fences of this power can be dangerous for your for your small animals or for yourself if you're under the right conditions. I mean, aside, it hurts. So yeah, exercise bunts caution. Don't be messing around. We're just we're just playing. Uh, yeah, just don't don't mess with your fences. And you know, if you got your dog, which I haven't figured out how I'm gonna stop the dog from getting shocked, because he should have got ate up again right there. So yeah. I've got to uh, cordon her off from this area or train her, which I guess we'll just train her to, uh, to stay away from the fence because uh, I don't want the little little poochie there getting her getting her nose burned off on this powerful fence. So I have to give her a little more obedience training to keep her away from this area. But, you know, during the day, I'm going to keep the fence off anyhow when, when she's out. I'll just turn on in the evening is probably the, the easiest thing to do. So, you know, a little combination of both just to keep the dog safe. Didn't talk about this a minute ago, but you say I haven't put a little little shield around the back of the fence charger as well. So in case, you know, a bear or whatever gets in there, he can't just rip, reach in and grab grab the uh, fence charger off. But yeah, that's uh, that ticking when it's pulsing. That's not a good, uh, wouldn't have a good day if you grab onto that. Safety first. You watched the first video on this bee bunker or the second one whichever one it was you know i got a got a little bait hive up here so i found uh, some of the swarm lure from man lake and i got a pack of this sitting here and uh yeah the bees have been coming around this pretty good the last last couple of days so fingers crossed we're gonna catch us a swarm so that's the the gist of the bee bunker throw the juice back to it and hear that clicking again Big juice, big power. Oh yeah. But yeah, that's it's almost complete. I am going to add another ground, another hot wire down low. I'll put a ground on the bottom and then throw another. I'm gonna do two hots on the bottom, something like that, change it, change it around so help keep skunks and stuff out. A little extra in a measure. Just to make sure that whole bottom section there is sealed off from small small mammals i think the big mammals are taken care of so uh yeah there's the there's the bee bunker and uh we'll have the real hives and real bees in a couple of weeks so i had to get everything done make sure it was ready to go but i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you don't mind please hit that like button questions or anything put it in the comments and if you're not subscribed i'd greatly appreciate a subscription from you thank you for watching the off Man homestead Y'all have a nice day.